uh, prepare the way. And I've talked about John the Baptist. It was, it was prophesied of him that he would prepare the way. He'd prepare the way before the Lord, before Jesus. And, and my part of that thought in that was this, is that that was prophesied of John the Baptist, but you and I are the same way. We are preparing the way. You and I are preparing what? What do, what do I mean by that? Is that you and I, the scripture says that the gospel we preached at the end of the, end of the earth or end of the world, and then the end would come. You know something? You go, well, everybody in America's heard. Can I tell you not everybody in America's heard? Well, let, let me rephrase that. They've heard, but not with clarity. They've heard, but not with demonstration. They've heard, and they've watched our lives maybe and are really confused. <laughs> And uh, so, listen, it, it, it comes down to us. And so, um, one of the things that I said about John the Baptist is that not only he, did he receive, he received from the Lord. In fact, um, we see that, that, that they said in John chapter 30, they said, John, everybody, you know, you baptized Jesus and now everybody's going to him. And, he, and John 3.30 says, Paul says, or John says to himself, I must decrease, but he must increase. And he says, nobody receives anything unless it's been given to them unless the Lord releases it to them. And so I talked about um, in the church a lot of times we receive, but we never release. And, and I believe that John the Baptist was just, just that. He received from the Lord and he was faithful to release and fulfill God's will for his life. And so this morning I want to take a few moments and uh, I've just entitled this um, because I'm so clever, um, prepare the way again. <laughs> Instead of part two, it's just, again, how's that? <laughs> and so um, go with me. I want to I set some things up, and then I'm actually going, I'm going to have three points, but they're going to actually be three prayer points. And um, we're going to take time uh, to, for that um, and, and, and move them from there. So go with me to Mark chapter 1, verse 17. I've got several scriptures I'm going to share with you at the beginning. Like I said, trying to set some things up for us. Um, this is really, um, this passage I'm about to, to read to you is, is uh, one of our foundational scriptures. Um, I'll take a few moments to kind of communicate a th and some thoughts in regards to that. But the point is this, in Mark 1.17, Jesus says um, to Peter, um, he, says, he says, follow me and I will make you become fishers of men. Follow me, and I'll make you become fishers of men. Men, and you, you might say, "Well, why, Pastor Scott? Is that one of our foundational um, scriptures?" Well, if you've been around here and we talk about the process of discipleship, begin, belong, become, and beyond. Um, the, we, we talk about destiny as the place to be. What do we mean by that? Begin, belong, become, and beyond. And and Jesus said, "Follow," and that's where we begin. You, you can't. There's no other. There's no other starting point. There's no uh, restarting point. It's all in Jesus. He says, "Follow me." Me is is who we belong to. You and I, when we say yes to Jesus, we, we belong to Him. Uh, he He stamps His name upon us. He stamps His 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 name of or His uh, His stamp of approval upon us. I, I want to go back and say something because right. Riker said that sometimes dad doesn't say anything, and I don't know the process. You know sometimes? Because I don't know the process. I'm trying to figure it out, too. So I'm just having to, I'm trying to wait and listen. Like <laughs> She keeps asking God, what do I do? <laughs> so anyway, um, but he says, follow me, and I will make you become. In other words, he says, I'm going to work in you. I'm going to allow my spirit to begin to work in you and develop you and cause you to begin to become who I've called you to become. When we see Peter at the beginning of this, right, we see him as a stinky old fisherman. And then we see that he's kind of got a stinky attitude about some things. And then we, right, as we move along, but there comes a point, and Jesus saw it early on. Jesus knew it. There came a point. Remember, there's, there's a time where he says, I'll die for you. And Jesus says, you'll deny me three times before the rooster crows. Oh, not me. I'm going to die. And we see scripture says that he denied him three times exactly like Jesus said. But we see about 50 plus days later, after the day of Pentecost, he wasn't denying Jesus anymore. In fact, he began to, because why? Because he, as he followed Jesus, the Holy Spirit was causing him to become what? A fisher. He understood that. He understood the industry. He understood the job. 
I'll make you become a fisher of men. And so the reason I say this is because we're preparing the way he's called each of us to follow him so that he can cause us to become fishers of teachers, fishers of businessmen, fishers of students, fishers, you know, I mean, wherever we are, fishers of doctors, fishers, anyway. And, and so um, Paul would give us some understanding and explanation in Ephesians 4. He says that the, 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 what we identify as the fivefold ministry is for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. The work of, it's not the works of ministry. It's, there's many works that make up ministry, but it's the work of ministry. And you know, what's, because when I follow Christ, then I'm following him to fulfill the work of ministry that he's called me to, called us to. So what's that work of ministry? Matthew 28, 18 through 20, and Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples. I'll stop right there. You, we, we know this, hopefully. Um, it's the great, what we identify as the great commission, that God's commissioned the church, that you and me, to make disciples. You all know that, that's for the preachers and that's for teachers. And all no, it's the body of Christ. It's the work of the ministry is to make disciples. So when I follow Christ, he will make me become a discipler of people, a discipler of men, discipler of uh, of those that are lost that would come to Christ and that they would come to maturity in Christ. And so you and I prepare the way. You all know, I, I, I just do this, right? I just don't, listen, God has called all of us and you all, I don't know because I, I can't do this or I can't do this. He has called you. I need you to understand that this morning. He has called you. He has called us. He has called me. Oh, yeah, you're a preacher. No, listen, he's called me to, to pastor. Yes, that's, but that's not, that doesn't, because I'm the pastor, it doesn't exempt me from any of those things. I am still called to be a discipler. I am still called to be a fisher of men. I am still called, um, and Paul would use the terminology, as a planter and a water. I, he's called me to be a spiritual farmer. He's called all of us to that. Wherever you are. And so, as we talk about this this morning, I want to look at this thought of preparing the way again. So, Father, I love you today, and I just thank you. Help us in your precious name. Amen. Um, I just saw this, and I don't know if y'all have got this back there, um, but next week, one of the things that we're going to do is, is be a little differently. Um, we're going to do a, a drama skit type deal next week and we have tickets for that it's called hashtag let's talk and um we have these tickets in the foyer will you take one and we're going to talk a little bit more and we won't talk more about this but we're talking about using this as a as a tool as a lure um but hashtag let's talk and we're, one of the things is talking about social media, yes, and, and we're not here to go all oh, social media. It's, it's not to preach against that. It really, the, the hook is this, hashtag Jesus wants to talk to you, right? And so one reason to doing this is because we know people, um, they don't want to hear somebody maybe preach, and drama's a little different, so it's going to be a little different for us next week, um, but uh, these are in the foyer. I, I, like I said, I was praying and saw that, oh, I forgot to announce that. Um, these are in the foyer. Use these. Hey, take, take about 12 of them. Bring 12 people with you, and I'll give you two gift cards to Texas Day Brazil. <laughs> and so um, uh, you, you're going to have to work hard because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to outbeat all, I'm gonna beat all of you. I'm not going to take it, though, but I'm still going to beat all of you. How's that? So this, this past Monday, and Monday nights, we, we come together and pray, and uh, praying for the Destiny family praying for the church, praying for what God's calling us to do in our community. And uh, a lot of times when in prayer, the Lord will begin to give me thoughts for Sundays or sometimes, uh, a lot of times, it's, it, it's a thought that's really just, it prompts me to other things. Um, but this week in prayer, there were three scriptures that came to my mind and or three thoughts of, of scriptures that came to mind. And so um, this morning as I or as I was preparing this week, I thought, well, how, how do I develop this? How do I bring this um, together? And so there's going to be really kind of three statements out of some scripture, and I'm not trying to pull it relatively out of context, but there, there's a thought in each of these that I feel like that are for us when we talk about prepare the way. 
And so, um, like I said, I'm, I'm going to um, use these as be, to become prayers for us. And so I want to take these statements. The first statement comes out of, or the first um, verse I want to look at is 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse 29. Don't show it just yet. Let me, let me give a little bit of detail. Okay, go ahead and show it. And uh, <laughs> it was already there. That's fine. Um, I, I can't see behind me. Um, this, this passage, this story, what you need to understand is, is this is where David fights Goliath. Pastor Tiffany talked a little bit about this morning. And I'm like, okay, that's, that, that helps me. Um, but in this moment, David comes and he sees they're, they're, they're lined up. They've lined up to go to church. They got their Sunday best on. But they're sitting on the sidelines and they're not going in. Um, and David's brother goes, why are you, hey, you little smart aleck kid. <laughs> this is the SRV version. It's not like that you won't read it like that in the Bible. This is the SRV, the Scott Russell version, right? He's like, his, uh, his older brother like, hey, little kid, what are you doing? Get, just go away. And David's response about Goliath defaming God. And he's, it says, what have I done now? I bet I, could, I, I can just see it. <laughs> what have I done now? But the statement, is there not a cause? This man is defaming God and you're sitting here like a bump on a log. SRV, <laughs> right? Is there not a cause to do something about this big mouth? And for us, as we start talking about prepare the way, I'm going to ask you this. Is there not a cause? Do you see what's going on in our world? Do you see what's going on in our neighborhoods? Do you see what's going on in our schools? Do you see what's going on? And when I say that, I'm not going, oh, no, what are we going to do? I'm scared and run away. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying there's time for the church to stand up. Yes. To recognize that there is a cause. There's a cause for Christ. There's a cause for the kingdom. And so instead of just going, well, I, I, Lord, now lay me down to sleep. I pray, Lord. Listen, we, we need to open up our eyes. And I love that prayer because you understand something? I love, I love that prayer because that taught me to pray. But there came a time when I was about 12 years old, I had to, I had to mature beyond. Now I lay me down to sleep. Hey, we need to teach our kids to pray. And if that helps them, then do it. They just can't be 16, 17, 37, 47, and still praying that prayer because there is a cause and it's a, it's a large cause, and the only way that we're going to be able to do anything about it is if we answer and, and recognize that God has called each of us. And so is there not a cause? And so I would say this is the, the first point that I, that I would make from this passage this morning, that we have to take it personally. We have to take it personally. That's, that, you know, take it personally. I mean, for, some might go, why, why are we doing a... Why are we doing a Texas Day Brazil card? Because I can't come up here and say, hey, will you do this for free? I know I should. <laughs> but what I should ain't getting me what I need. <laughs> and so I'm, gonna, I'm offering two $50 gift cards to Texas Day Brazil. You know why? Because we like incentives, don't we? We like incentives, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not, I'm not trying to belittle or devalue anything. I'm just saying, listen, I, I'm doing it because, listen, I, I'm trying to I, I do something. If, 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 if it's uh, some good steak or something like that, and that, that'll prompt you to help us out, then, then let's do it. Um, but we, you and I have to take it personally. You know, when, when kids go to school, or, or right now I, I can a little bit, but when you, if you go to school, even if you're a parent, if you go to school, you know they, they're not going to let you stay. They make you put on a, a goofy sticker that says visitor. I always hated that sticker. Visitor. Because you can't stay. But you know who can stay? You know who they make stay? Students. Teachers. And so I can't go into that school maybe, but they can. Take it personally that, that that school is your mission field. 
I'm not asking you to win everybody. I'm asking you to, who, who's the Lord put in your sphere of influence that you can just, and I'll get into this next point, who did you can plant and water? So that was the first scripture. Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? Let's take it personally. Lord, I just pray right now. I pray over the Destiny family. Lord, I pray for an anointing upon us. Lord, I pray that there would be a, something that would rise up within us. Lord, that we begin to take this, this gospel, that we would take our spiritual walk personally and seriously, and Lord, that we would follow after you with all of our heart in your precious name. The second scripture that, that as, as we were in prayer was 1 Corinthians 3, and it's 6 through 8, but uh, um, actually six, uh, yeah, 6 through 9, but I'm just going to do 6 and 7, I believe. Um, it says, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So, no, so neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters is anything, but God who gives the increase. And so not only do I need you to take it personally, but I need to also need you to understand we must work. Some plant, some water. Some plant, some water. Some of us plant today and we water tomorrow. I'm not much of a farmer, Tiffany, or, or anywhere close to that. Tiffany's um, knows, she likes planting gardens. And stuff. I'm like, I don't want to plant a garden. That means I got to clean up all the weeds. Can we just go to Kroger and get that tomato? <laughs> no, they taste better when you grow them on your own. I guess they do. Um, I don't know. Um, I'm not a big tomato person. Anyway. <laughs> but they're awesome. Tiffany's tomatoes are awesome. Uh, but but there's, there's work involved. And the gospel causes us to work. Go make disciples. That Listen, that's not some easy thing to do. But you and I, have, there, there is a call for us. And when we talk about preparing the way again, you know, some, have you ever seen them, especially around here, have you ever seen them prepare to build a house or prepare to build a road? Have you seen all the preparation? It's like, how long are they going to work on this road? Pour the concrete already. Let's go. If you live right here uh, past this corner, that's what you've said for about three months now. <laughs> How long are you going to look at this? Put some concrete on it. Let's go. But what are they doing? They're preparing the way so that you can safely get to where you need to go. But there's work that's involved. I would say this this morning. If you don't plant or if you don't water, there is no harvest. You can pray all you want to, oh, Lord, please grow an apple tree. But if you don't plant an apple tree, you're not going to get apples unless you go to Kroger. So, so you and I have got to understand something. Not, not only do we need to take it personally, not only on our spiritual walk, but recognizing that you and I have been called to prepare the way. We've got to take it personally. But the other part of that is that there's work, there's work that's involved. We don't like that. Well, uh, that you, you don't pay me anything. I'm going to tell you something. His retirement benefits far outweigh anything your company is going to give you. Amen. Anyway, we'll, we'll leave that alone for a little bit. Uh, but so that was the second verse. He who plants, there's some water and some plant, but it's God who gives the increase. Jesus said, he told his disciples, I believe it's Mark 9, uh, Matthew 9, one of the M9s. Uh, he says, he says uh, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send forth laborers. He said, the, the, the harvest is ready. The harvest is plentiful. The problem is we don't have enough people that will go out and work to bring in the harvest. And I'm telling you right now, it's, it's our place to work. It's our place to plant and to water, but God will bring the increase. And so, Lord, I just pray right now. Lord, give us the... the uh, the passion, give us the strength, give us the wisdom, the insight, Lord, the strategies, Lord, to work. Lord, I just thank you that as we would not only take our, our um, relationship with you personally, but I'll recognize that it's, it's, there is a cause that we need to take up. And Lord, that cause, that causes us for, for us to plant the kingdom, to plant the word and to water it. And Lord, we ask that you'd bring an increase in the name of Jesus. 
The third passage, and, and this one was, was prompted because of really the, this last one or, or, of 1 Corinthians. In Genesis chapter 26, it says, Then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. In other words, what it says is that he planted and he watered and he received a hundredfold back. That the reason I went to this passage because what it says in Genesis chapter 26, verse 1. There was a famine in the land. Nobody, not very many people plant. I'm not going to plant because there's no water. There's a drought. We're having problems. There's, there's issues. I, I don't have any way to, to water. I don't have any way to cultivate this. I don't have any way to bring this about, so I'm not going to even try. But it says that Isaac, in the same year that there was a famine, he planted. And he reaped a hundredfold. And so what I want you to understand this morning is we may not have a famine, but have you heard of a little thing called COVID? <laughs> oh, Pastor Scott, we can't go to those businesses because of COVID. Pastor, we can't invite our neighbors because of COVID. Oh, Pastor, we can't come do this because of COVID. Oh, Pastor, what are we going to do about all these things? And I fully understand every bit of it, and I want us to be wise, and I want us to be protected, and all those things, but his kingdom has to still go forth. We can't say, well, I got an excuse. I promise you, I promise you, God's not going, well, I guess we'll just, we'll take all those scriptures away. You don't have to go, you don't have to go extend the kingdom. That's okay. You're, you're COVID, because I'm going to tell you something. God is able, even in a famine, to bring about a harvest. Oh, I'm glad somebody, exact, come on, I, I, help me here. I, I, come on. All right, there we go. I, I, come on. Come on, church, we got to, not only we got to recognize there's a cause and we got to take up personally, but we've got to do our work and we got to begin to plant and begin to water. Oh, but Pastor Scott, what about all these things? Oh, what about all of these things? There's still people dying and going to hell because we won't plant and we won't water because we're afraid. And listen, I, I don't be, we're not going to be um, silly. We're not going to be ignorant. We're going to do our best that we can. But listen, we still have to move forward. We still have to move forward. Because God is able. So you and I are, have been called to prepare the way. Pastor Scott, I'm scared. I understand that. I do. Do you realize that before there was a mandate, there was a mandate, and it was in the Russell household. And I said, before we go anywhere, we're going to put on a mask. And, oh, you're, fr you're afraid? No. It's not I'm, a, I'm afraid, but I don't know about the next guy, the guy next to me who's a goofball and he doesn't give a care about anything. I want to protect myself from that. Can I say, can I say goofball as a pastor? Okay, okay. <laughs> if you gave me permission. Sometimes I have to look to Tiffany. He's like, okay. <laughs> no, all right. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going over here. <laughs> we'll go to Sizzler together, buddy. <laughs> that, that, was, that was awesome. I know some of you are like, what is he talking about? Don't worry about it. Uh, but God is able. Church, God is able. God is able in the midst of COVID that there would be an outbreak or there'd be a harvest that we've never seen before. And the world would go, oh, you can't do this. And they say, oh, you can't, but he can. He can. But what are you going to do? What are you going to do about what are you going to do about all these things? I don't know what you're going to do, but I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get them in the presence of the Lord, and I believe that He is able to protect. Listen, if the if uh, of over a million people, six million people can walk through the desert for for forty years, and, and their clothes won't wear out, and their shoes don't wear out, do you think God can protect somebody from COVID? I do. I'm not, I'm not going to be. I'm not going to be ignorant. I'm not going to. Oh, that. Uh, just have faith. Listen, I'm, I'm going to be wise. Is, that's why we still wear mask in and we wear a mask out. Well, I thought it was lifted. It has lifted, and I'm, I'm, I'm aware of that. And I have faith enough to be able to handle that. But you know something? There's going to be somebody that goes, well, I don't want to go in there because they're not wearing masks. I don't want. I don't want to offend somebody because, I, because I'm, I'm able. Because he's able, right? Um. So, so follow me on that just a little bit. But the point is, is that God is able. So one, we have to take it personally because there is a great cause. But when we take it personally, that means we have to, we have to get to work. And even in the midst of difficulty, God is able. Lord, Lord, 
give us the faith that will overcome our fears. But, Lord, I also ask that you would protect us, that the blood of Jesus would cover us and help us, that wherever we would go and whatever we would do, Lord, that you would protect us. And, Lord, that you would rebuke um, infirmity, the spirit of infirmity. You'd rebuke COVID, and we'd walk in divine health in the name of Jesus. Lord, that our, that our sons and our daughters would go to school in divine health. Lord, that we would go to work in divine health. Lord, I just thank you today because you are able. In your precious name, amen. Amen. Prepare the way again because I'm going to receive and then I'm going to have the faith to release because I believe that he's calling the church not only to receive, we sing mighty breath of God. This one, I love that song. But he's saying, how often do I have to breathe on you? It's time for you to move. You've received, now release. Take it personally enough. Do you, not see, do you not see the world going, where's God and all this? And it's time for the church to rise up and say, there's a cause to demonstrate the power of God. Amen. Amen. Father, I just thank you for this day. Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit, oh, captivate our hearts today. <laughs> Lord, do a work in us. Lord, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by your Spirit and so, Lord, as we would go forth, Lord, we pray um, for next week. Lord, give us the, uh, give us the courage um, to work. Give us the courage to invite. Give us the courage to plant, to water. Lord, give us the, the courage to go out and fulfill your, your mission and your purpose for us individually and as a church. And, Lord, we just thank you that as we plant and we, uh, we water, Lord, we, we have this confidence. You will bring the increase, and we receive that today. Lord, in your precious name, amen, 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 amen. Come on, give the Lord praise today. Come on. All right. I got one thing and I'll be gone.